Jan Kum, born on February 24, 1976, in Kyiv, Ukraine, is best known as the co-founder of WhatsApp, one of the world's most popular messaging applications. His life journey is a fascinating tale of resilience, innovation, and the pursuit of success. Kum's positive aspects are evident in his entrepreneurial spirit, determination, and the impact he has made on the global communication landscape. However, like any other individual, he also has faced challenges and controversies throughout his career. Kum's story begins in Ukraine, where he grew up in a humble household. His family faced financial struggles, which later became a driving force for him to succeed. In 1992, at the age of 16, Kaum immigrated to the United States with his mother and grandmother, seeking a better life. They settled in Mountain View, California, a place that would later become the hub of technological innovation. Despite the challenges of adapting to a new country and culture, Kuhn excelled in his studies. His interest in programming led him to pursue computer science at San Jose State University. During his time there, he developed a passion for coding and technology, laying the foundation for his future endeavors. In 1997, Kuhn was hired by Yahoo as an infrastructure engineer. His time at Yahoo provided him with valuable experience and insights into the tech industry. However, it was in 2009, after leaving Yahoo, that Kaum, along with his colleague Brian Acton, co-founded WhatsApp. Their vision was to create a simple, user-friendly messaging app that could be used by people around the world, regardless of their technical expertise. This vision soon became a reality, and WhatsApp rapidly gained popularity, eventually reaching billions of users globally. Coombe's positive aspects shine through his dedication to user privacy and security. He implemented end-to-end -end encryption in WhatsApp, ensuring that users' messages were protected from prying eyes. This commitment to privacy earned him respect and trust among users, making WhatsApp the preferred choice for many. On the financial front, Combs' contributions are significant. In 2014, Facebook acquired WhatsApp for a staggering $19 billion, making it one of the largest technology acquisitions in history. Combs' entrepreneurial acumen and the success of WhatsApp added substantially to his personal wealth and further established his position in the tech industry. However, like many successful individuals, Coombs' journey was not without its challenges. In recent years, WhatsApp has faced scrutiny for issues related to misinformation and privacy concerns. The platform has been criticized for its role in spreading fake news and rumors, leading to real-world consequences in some instances. These challenges have raised questions about the ethical implications of platforms like WhatsApp in the digital age. In conclusion, Jan Coombs' life and journey are a testament to the power of perseverance and innovation. His positive aspects, including his entrepreneurial spirit, commitment to user privacy, and contributions to the world of finance, have left a lasting impact on the way people communicate globally. However, he has also grappled with the negative aspects associated with the immense reach and influence of platforms like WhatsApp. Coombe's story serves as a reminder of the complexities of the digital era, highlighting the need for ethical considerations and responsible use of technology in our interconnected world. Part of that is our philosophy that stems with no advertising, is that we don't collect people's personal information. Unlike a lot of companies that are built around advertising, we don't know your gender, we don't know your name, we don't know where you live, we don't know your address. You just know the phone number. Just the phone number and people you message with and people you want to message. And, and I think uh, even messages themselves are not really stored on our servers the moment they're delivered to your phone. So how do I know when I'm sending a WhatsApp message to somebody else that it can't be intercepted? You don't store it on the server, but what right. happens between my phone and the server? Well, so we have encryption in place between the phone and the server to make sure that it is protected from basic kind of snooping and eavesdropping. Uh, and I think the important thing to keep in mind is that for us, the product and the user experience and, and everything is built around this kind of us knowing as little as possible about the user and what they do on our network. 
if you have a chance to be successful and you kind of give it all, give it all, you're probably going to end up not having great of a balance. I think, I think it even it goes back to like our interaction. Basically, 2011, 2012, 2013, I kind of just like disappeared off the radar. You used to have these uh, parties every week at your house that. Uh, our early. group would go to, and, and I think starting at around 2010 or 2011, I, I stopped going to most of them because we were just working so much. I think during those two, three, two, three years, as we were growing and, and we didn't really yet have enough employees to kind of help us with everything, me and Brian would spend weekends working at a company and then as we kind of got a little bit more stable and more mature, mm -hmm. we were like, okay, well, we'll give ourselves a Sunday off. <laughs> Um, and, and then obviously now it's, it's a little bit more balanced, like we don't really spend uh, 80 hours a week at the office anymore, uh, we, which, is, which is great because now you can enjoy things like spending time with your friends and family, which we kind of put on hold for two, three years. But I, th I think the, uh, you know, the other thing is like I probably weighed 50 pounds less before I started WhatsApp. So it's like another sacrifice you make, like, you know, you don't, you don't get to see your friends, you don't get to see your family, you don't get to like do the things you want to do like work out or play ultimate frisbee or go to the gym or or anything else and so you know if you really if you really kind of go all in you go all in there is no uh, kind of if or but or anything else in between one be simple and reliable two we won't stop until every single person on the planet has an affordable and reliable way to communicate with their friends and loved ones three a lot of times, people start out with a lot of good ideas, but then they don't execute. They lose the purity of their vision. You end up running around in circles. 4. I didn't have a computer until I was 19, but I did have an abacus. 5. There were a lot of negatives, of course, but there were positives to living life unfettered by possessions. It gave us the chance to focus on education, which was very important in the Soviet Union. 6. I grew up in a country where advertising doesn't exist. 7. Communication is at the very core of our society. That's what makes us human. 8. I only have one idea, that is WhatsApp, and I am going to continue to focus on that. I have no plans to build any other ideas. 9. If partnering with Facebook meant that we had to change our values, we wouldn't have done it. 10. In some countries, WhatsApp is like oxygen. 11. We obviously try to be in tune with what our users want. 12. Facebook, Google, Apple, Yahoo, there's a common theme. None of these companies ever sold. By staying independent, they were able to build a great company.